I am Dior Cruz. I am your life applications officer. Yeah. This is the conclusion of this series, this lovely little series that I'm doing on your behalf. I want to start with people in general. Now, my Bible explains everything. Um, can you explain why we're all so different? And I think it is wrong for anyone to assume that we're all different and we all have a right to be different, do we? According to science, according to biology, according to medicine, according to uh, responsibility about sexual activity, responsibility about children, responsibility about guns, responsibilities about um, parenting, marriage, okay, do we have a right to all be different from one another? My Bible says no. We all have a right to be different within a cer certain perimeter. We all have a right to be different within a certain context. If you take it out of that context, depending on what it is, you know, for example, men can act, you know, soft. Men can wear pink shoes. Men can wear pink shirts. They can even collect stuffed animals in private if they want to. But to lay down with another man, my Bible says no. Okay? Women don't have to wear dresses. Women don't have to do clerical work. Women don't have to cook. Women don't have to have children. Women don't have to, you know, um, get up every day and put makeup on and, and, you know, put perfume on. She can wear a paint suit and grow an afro or just keep her hair wrapped up in a ponytail or she can cut her hair almost as small as mine. But to lay down with another woman and try to be the man that's missing in her life or the female that's missing in her life, whatever one you think you are, my Bible says no. Absolutely no way, Jose, go to sleep, devil. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's a lot of people in the world. And one thing that I've learned as a Christian that makes me comfortable is that I know that we're either right or we're wrong. Now, depending on how wrong you are, you can be wrong in a very small way. Okay, and nobody's losing sleep. But one thing that is very hypocritical, and we've all done it, and there are a lot of us like this. We're being put on a pedestal for nothing. We are taking and stealing from the world around us. We, we are the... Winners of all things without trying to be winners. We beat, for some of us, us men. We beat all the other men 
at whatever it is that they will do with women. You know, every day I see men that are super handsome, tall, muscle-bound, great shape, and had a lot of experiences in life that I wouldn't mind sitting down and listening to them talk about. However, they treat women poorly. Very poorly. And there's a power when a man only wants snatch when it's available. But to the rest of the time, you know, he doesn't have to be a nice guy and he's still getting a snatch. And there, there's a technique to that. There's a whole culture to that. But um, if you are a man that is claiming to love a woman, if she loves you, regardless of your lack of humility, regardless of your lack of um, letting her have the last word at least half the time, um, if you know you don't you don't bow to no one, especially her. You're not the man that you're supposed to be. A man cares for the things of the world that he might please his wife. A man hearkens and humbles himself to the voice of his wife. Okay? However, flip it back to the ladies. The man is the king of his castle. It doesn't matter how much money he does not make. It does not matter how um, small his pecker is. It does not matter um, what he does for a living. It does not matter whether he's, you know, a hot shot or the one you just don't pay attention to. Nobody pays attention to this poor guy. However, when you're in a relationship with a man, that man is the king of his castle. He is in charge. Okay, he might not be in charge of the family business because he doesn't, he's not a business oriented man. But your daddy ain't in charge of your marriage business. Your daddy, your big brother, is not to rule over your husband. And I see countless times when men are ran by either a woman or the woman's parents or the woman's siblings. Okay? And this is just an example of how people in the world are. Okay? This is, this is just an example. Um, and um, just because we, let's talk about that for a second in, in, in closing this out. Being nice, being a good person. In God's eyes, if you're not a man of God, you're not a good person. You can't fully be a good person without being a man of God. Because a good man does not reject God. A good man does not have an estranged relationship or a distant relationship with God. If you are a man... Part of the hair on your chest, okay, is to be in relationship to God, whether small or great. Even if your duties don't involve ministry, you still are supposed to have that relationship with God to where God is your heavenly Father. That's the fact. Then you don't have to worry about people calling you a nice person and such a good person for nothing. Because if you 
for example, and I'll use the situation that I undergo on YouTube every day of my life. Every time I, every time, you know, people come to my comment section, every time people snag my videos and put them on their channel, here, here's the thing that I notice. You get on YouTube like a coward. And you think that because you're only doing this on YouTube and not doing this out in the street, you think that that makes you righteous in what you do on YouTube. No. A thug is a thug. If you bully people out on the street, what's the difference someone else doing it on YouTube? You know what I'm saying? If you're stalking people, if this one guy is stalking people, okay, if this one guy is stalking people, um, if one guy is stalking people, at school in real time and the other guy is stalking people on the internet what's the difference if one guy is clowning people and saying nasty ignorant things to people in real time at real school and the other one's doing it on YouTube what's the difference is not really a big enough difference to call it a difference. Yeah, it's a slight difference. But it's not a big enough difference to really call it a difference. Okay? Bad boys are bad boys. And this is the thing that I see in the world every day. Um, and, I, and, and I catch myself. You know. Um... I catch myself. Um, cuz I do it sometimes. And I'm a nice guy. Well, I have done it in the past. I was a nice guy because somebody was giving me credit for it. But you don't give me credit for it, I'm not a nice guy. Well, that's the wrong attitude. Okay, and being a nice guy is not about being evil over here on YouTube and then coming home and acting like you're somebody totally different. It's not getting on this show or this interview or this hearing or whatever, okay, and you appear to be this wonderful person, but then you come to YouTube and act like a clown and stalk people on YouTube and act like a clown. You can't talk about how someone should raise their kid when nobody sees you raising your kid. Okay? You can't talk about marriage and how long you've been married without admitting your flaws. Because we all have them. From the best of us to the worst. We all have flaws. How are you going to talk about marriage. When you're not really faithful. Because even if your wife allows you to be unfaithful. It's still unfaithfulness. Your wife took you to a strip club. For you to be unfaithful in front of her. You were unfaithful by even showing up in a place like that. Your wife is unfaithful for taking you there. And she's a victim because she thinks that by taking you on this journey. She doesn't have to worry about you cheating on her because she's taking you there she's giving you 
what other men wish they could have. So she thinks you won't cheat on her. But what will you do when you become mad? Will you let pride set in and arrogance set in? Being you said you ain't fit to be forgiven anybody. Being you said that you ain't fit to ever apologize to anybody. Now, I don't know what they teach you in the atheist community. But in my community, they teach you that a man humbles himself over and over and over again. When men come to know the Lord, the first day of salvation, we usually cry. We cry like a baby. It's not because we're weak. It's not because we are gay. It's not because... We're deceived. We cry like a baby because we've humbled ourselves to that point. We've been broken. See, there's two kinds of brokenness. I've said this in two videos. There's, there's brokenness where things that are spiritual that are impure have broken you. And it doesn't mean you have to be a Christian to be broken of certain things. You have to be a Christian to be broken of God but or broken of sin. But you can be broken two ways. One is by being broken by spiritual matters or God. For example, without being a Christian, you could be broken by acts of racial harmony. I've seen guys cry like a baby. And, you know, um, totally surrender to a situation where they um, have been motivated. By the very thing that they fought against for so long. Now they're motivated to change. They're motivated to love. They're motivated to forgive. For example, racism. Okay, I've seen people get broken. And very few African Americans or, or black people so-called, okay, don't experience that brokenness. All they... You know, they, they, they look at, you know, what's going on in the Harmony community. And in the black community, they're saying, oh, that's nice. Now, can we get back to hating on white people? Because they owe us. Okay? And that's how many of us are. Okay? But some people, like myself, have been broken, not only in the Lord, but I've been broken by the things that I've seen in real time of where black people come together, black and white people come together the way it really matters. In a way that is worth photographing and videotaping and getting this on camera, getting this out to the world. Because these kind of happenings are beginnings that are good for all of us especially if we're racist good for all of us or especially if we are a victim we feel like we're a victim of racism or a victim of slavery these moments of reconciliation are worth buying tickets for they're worth spending money on they're worth traveling a long distance I've been there. It's It's been in my life over and over and over again. Picture being taken in my life. And every dream, every picture, every good part of any movie, I don't miss it. It's It sticks with me all the time because once it happens to you and it really overturns you, it becomes a gift that you just constantly keep receiving. Okay? God works the same way. 
When God comes into a person's life, it's a gift that he keeps on receiving. It has nothing to do with how much money. I'm getting to that. How much money we have. What our wife looks like. This is, this is the stuff that I heard back in 2013 and 2015 when I started on YouTube. Dealing with these atheists. Okay. An atheist told me one time, he said, what a man needs is a good job that pays a lot of money and a beautiful wife. He said the rest is, you know, cool beans or the rest is, you know, rubbish. You know, it's, it's, it's just grass or whatever um, on those lines. I disagree because in order for a man to have a lot of money it takes a lot of discipline and some people got a lot of money because they're getting paid to do something that they like to do for the devil. They're getting paid to do something that they love to do for the devil. And they're miserable. That's why, like last night, how many drunk people did I have to deal with last night? Security was wall to wall last night. Drunk people all over the place. And these people aren't people that live in the ghetto. These people aren't people who make minimum wage. These people aren't people who aren't recognized as pillars in their community. These people are indeed recognized as pillars in their careers and pillars in their communities. But they come here and trash Pittsburgh. As they get away for a meeting or get away for, you know, a corporate, you know, um, pleasurable, you know, sit down with, you know, the other side of their company and so forth. Um, and some just simply on vacation. But they get together even with people that they work with and they make a fool out of themselves drinking and next thing you know you know security has to come in there and restrain people and threaten to call the police on people and you know their friends want to get up because oh they're so uh so pious they're so important so their friends are coming up and they're about ready to attack security. Okay, well, you want to save your friend, take him out of the building. Take him off the property. Okay, if he falls on his head out there because you can't hold him up, that's on you. If he gets in a fight with somebody out there on the street and you can't restrain him, that's on you. But, just because he's all that in a bag of chips, that doesn't mean he gets to come to Pittsburgh and act a fool and make it hard for us. And this is the way the world is. Around and around and around and around. As the world is around itself, we keep going around in a circle with sin. And as I said in the last video, sin is a real thing. We do it every day. We do it every time we open our mouths. I told somebody at work last night. We, matter of fact, we was talking about them last night. Everything simple A and mother effer, mother effer, and simple A. Okay? And you're not going to go home and talk like that around your wife. Your wife, see, now your wife. Because the way you carry on at work, 
when you go home, your wife gets to be almost Jesus. Because you ain't going to say certain things and do certain things around her. But you're going to come to work and play the hypocrite. You come to work and you're talking to other women. And you're going out of your way for other women. You're doing things that you used to do for your wife. Okay? Back when y'all first started meeting each other. Now you... Your wife is... A piece of property. And you love her. But yet. You can't love her and respect her. 100 at the same time. See respect is not just what you do. In a person's presence. But it's what you do behind that person's back. How you talk about that person. Behind their back. What you do with other people. And other men and women around. Your spouse's back. And I'm just using him as an example. I'm using you as an example. Sin is a real thing. How about we free think about how to be moral enough so that we don't have to apologize based on what we think of ourselves but based on facts how about we fact check our attitude that we have behind our wife or husband and in front of him or her how about we do some fact checking our niceness our kindness our good guy because from what I see, it doesn't really exist. That is separate from the people that I know that are just as good to everybody else as they are to their family. That's separate from people I know that they don't have to worry about their wife not trusting them. Their wife getting into an argument with them in the car about their arrogant attitude. The worst thing a Christian man can do to his wife is choose not to argue with her. But when you argue with a woman, they call that being a beta male, or being a sissy. Even if the woman is wrong. Look at how Abraham handled Sarah. And he was the king of his castle. But he had full respect for Sarah. And Sarah called him what? She called him Lord. She had good respect for him right back. She disrespected him. This is why we have the nation of Islam. She disrespected him when she allowed that born woman to have a child for her. Forgetting that you can call that your child all you want to. That woman's going to cling to her biological son. And they all tried to be nice. Hagar tried to be nice. Abraham tried to be nice. Sarah tried to be nice. Sarah was always faithful and strong and submissive to Abraham until she wanted to have a child so bad she forgot she was a woman. She forgot she was submissive. She forgot. Pressure made her forget. And Abraham understood it was pressure. He tried to get her to slow down and think about this. But when he did it, hearkening unto her voice, she accused him of adultery, which he did. Even though in those days, pious men slept with their slaves to have children by their slaves and so forth. But Abraham loved all his slaves. And that's another thing in the world today. Everybody thinks they're supposed to be on the same level. You're not. Everybody is either a slave to many people or at once was a slave to many people. Okay? Now the Bible says that even a son 
okay, has to count, he has to make himself worthy to be the heir. He's not the heir of the family if he doesn't become worthy. Until he becomes worthy, even though he is the son, he's a slave. Because in order for him's room and board, he will do whatever dad asks him to do. And he will say, yes, sir, even though he feels that this is not where he wants to be. But like his father, he will start off at the bottom and move up. And even though his father is giving him an inheritance, his attitude has to be checked at the door. Because it takes, as I said before, it takes humility and hard work to be wealthy. Unless you're doing it illegally. Unless you're getting into some things that are wicked. I know some people who um, have made all their money off of gambling all their life. And they've hardly had to work that much but they've got everything from gambling okay so uh, let's turn this free thinking into thinking about our attitude and really debating honestly whether that matters or not because it matters. It really does. Okay? And let me say this. You didn't reject God, you atheists, for nothing. You didn't reject God because God failed. You didn't reject God because Christians failed. You reject God because you are a failure. And this is why atheists work so hard to find something spiritual, one thing spiritual in their life that they can look up to and say, I did this without God's help, whether it be your wife or your children, your parents, the puppies. Okay, politics, whatever it may be, you try to find that one thing that you grab a hold of so much so that you can say, oh, I did this without God's help. So it's not a matter of God. It's not a matter of theology, but it's a matter of me. It's never about you. It's not about you in school. It's not about you in the field. It's not about you in the business. It's not about you in your marriage. It's not about you in the bedroom. It's never about you. Feel free to tell the person in front of you. It's never about him or her either. But it's about us. Us. As people of America. Better yet, people of God. It's about us. What's wrong with America? Too many rights. And not enough alpha men. Too many popes and not enough Christians. Too many races and ain't nobody winning a race. Just too many of everything. Everything. Everything is all about everybody jumping on this bandwagon of creating something to get rights about. Even if it's the dumbest, most nastiest thing ever. And we love to find ways to get in people's spaces by claiming we're a victim of them. You know, I told you the story about how we 
um, addressed a guy who just came in off the street and wanted to hang out in our lobby. The gay dude called us. Okay? The gay dude that works for us called us. So there's a guy out here. He's just hanging out here. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. What's he doing here? So we go out. And we told the guy, sir, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. You're not a guest. Lobby's closed. Look around you. Lobby's closed, sir. Are you a guest here? Is there something we can help you with? No, I'm not bothering anybody. <laughs> so, I says, well, sir, if you need a place to stay, you know, you can pay. There's the desk. Okay? But you can't just hang out here. You know. We're very nice to the guy. He comes back. He lived not too far away. But he wanted to come back. He came back with money. Because he wanted to talk to the other gay dude. And he says to the gay dude. I guess he didn't know he was gay. As feminine as he tries to act. I guess he didn't know he was gay. But he asked him. He says. Did those officers approach me because I was gay? And he says, no, I'm gay. I'm the one that called him. I'm sure they didn't approach you for that reason, sir. This is the problem I have with them people. Okay? So we get a phone call. He wanted to let us know the results about the guy because um, we had a feeling that he was going to try to come back. But he came back with money and, and stayed. So we wouldn't have to escort him out again. Um, he comes in there and he calls. We get a call from, you know, the um, customer service desk. And he tells us what happened. And me and my partner, we looked at each other like, did you know the dude was gay? I didn't know the dude was gay. I know he was weird, but I didn't think he was gay. So then we get a call. Because it goes, everything gets reported and documented, and that's fine. And we documented it, too. We get a call from the captain. First thing in the morning, the captain calls me. Asks me about profiling people. And I says, we didn't know the guy was gay. We thought he was just another random white dude who came in there off the street trying to hang out because he don't want to hang out at home. Which... He was honest about it, you know. I don't know if he had a fight with his boyfriend or what was going on, but he didn't want to be home, okay? So he's going to come, you know, just plump himself in a five-star like that. You know, um, we, had, we had to escort him out. He came back. The dude's wealthy. He came back with money. But he couldn't wait to accuse us of something that we didn't even know was going on. And this is what we go through every day. You know, we get our pronouns wrong. When the girl is a girl, she looks like a girl. She dressed like a girl. Okay, she got short hair. I didn't know that meant that she's trying to be a boy just because she got short hair. And forgot to put makeup on this morning. I didn't know that what meant that she was trying to be something else. This is the world we live in, and it's just getting crazier and crazier and crazier. Now, don't call me him. Don't call me her. Call me they. Call me us. Can I call you idiot? Okay. Can I call you, please leave the country? I'm, uh, I'm going to call your name P-L-T-C. Please leave the country, P-L-T-C. That's the way I feel about that. There's not enough room and not enough brick walls to hide behind for everybody to be shooting some random bullet against everybody that ain't like them and everybody that don't support their nonsense. Okay? 
So my computer is letting me know that I'm running out of space. So I don't know why I just clean. I guess it's the new camera. Um, but anyway, I am D. Roy Cruz. I am your life applications officer. I think I said enough. I think that's all of it. Um, if I have anything more to say, I will do it in another video. I'm pretty sure I'll go over all this again in another video. But that's um, good enough for now. Thank you for watching. God bless you.